So a cloud's been hanging over us for about three months, three and a half months. My daughter's just been sick. She can't get well. Every time we think she's getting better, so we send her back to school. We get called from school. She's fainted or she's just too sick. She has a screaming th sore throat all the time. She just feels miserable. It's four days before Christmas. We haven't really done much planning for Christmas, not ready for the summer, because all our focus has been on her. But this day, we're kind of giddy. We're a little bit excited. We've woken up early. We've all gotten up and gotten dressed, and we're headed to a specialist. We've seen quite a few doctors already. We've been sent for blood test after blood test, and there's nothing. But the doctor said, maybe an ear, nose, and throat doctor can help you. So we're driving to the ear, nose, and throat doctor that morning, and starting to talk about what we might do when she gets well, going to the beach, going for some trance during the summer. We're really excited about the possibility. We go into the doctor's office, and he's very nice. He very quickly looks down her throat, looks in her ears, and then tells us it's not operational. There's nothing I can do. The cloud is back again. Like, what do you mean? My 13-year-old is in pain all the time. Her throat is killing her. How can this not be operational? How can he not be able to do something? He's an ear, nose, and throat doctor. But he calmly looks at us and says, I've seen this before. She's not the only one. It's something called post-viral malaise. And I sink. Like, no. A really good friend of mine, her son has myalgic encephalus something. I can't pronounce it. I can't say it. Chronic fatigue syndrome. And that's what he's saying my daughter has. And I know there's nothing to be done. Four days before Christmas. There's nobody else to see. There's nobody to talk about. What, what are we going to do? And I think, this is okay. I go into fix-it mode. That's my normal mode. I'm a mathematician. My husband's a biologist. We can fix this. It's going to be better for us because we can science the heck out of this. I can keep data. We can figure out what makes her better, what makes her worse. We can avoid the things that make her worse. She's going to get better. And so we start doing that. We get her a tracker that she keeps on her arm, and I download the data, and I record everything she eats, and I put her on every diet anybody recommends, the doctors and friends, and we try eliminating things, and she's still sick. We record every moment she sleeps. She's still tired. Anything she does, if she goes out and walks the dog, her throat hurts more. People say exercise should make you feel better. It does not make her feel better. We start her in year nine. And she just, she's in pain. She's miserable. She can't go to school. We keep pushing. She keeps trying. We negotiate with the school. She starts going less and less. I join the Man or two in a support group. Find people to talk to, people who understand, people who know other people who've been in pain and know how this feels. Finally, go to a doctor who gives us some good advice and says, she really just needs to sleep. She needs to do nothing. Nothing? She's 13 years old. How's that 13 year old? She'll catch up. It's okay. Let her stay at home. Let her do nothing. So she homeschools for a term. And she does appear to be feeling better. But she used to dance and play hockey and canoe polo and tennis. And now, I mean, if I can get her out the front door with the dog to walk five feet and then back in, that's a huge feat. Where did my little girl go?
treating this disease, you have to treat the whole person, really the whole family. The doctor said, you know, we have some of the pain a little under control. There's no medicine that she can take to help with the pain, but she is getting a little bit better. But we have to think about this child and think about how she's feeling. I mean, anybody who's going from being so active to doing nothing is going to be feeling anxious and could be feeling depressed. And so they send us to the psychology services. And I think, oh, good, she'll get help. But we get there, and the psychologist is like, okay, the whole family needs to come in. I want to talk to all of you. And I'm like, wait, I'm not sick. What do you need to talk to me about? And I start to cry. And I cry. And she asked me questions, and I didn't know that I needed to grieve losing my little girl. All the hopes and the dreams that I had for her, that she wasn't going to be able to do all the things I'd hoped for. We were going to have to find a new way. And I had to grieve. She had to grieve. We had to learn how to talk to each other. Watching her talk to the therapist, the things she would tell the therapist, and afterwards I'd be like, you know, I have to learn how to listen to her. I have to learn how to talk to her as well. And we've done that. Therapy helped so much. The support group helped so much. Treating the whole thing. And we're managing. She's actually pretty good. She still has ME. But she's figured out well, I have this necklace that one of the um, people in the MA support groups makes. She calls it a spoony necklace. And it's about you only have so many spoons of energy. My daughter can appear completely normal. She can choose when to use her spoons of energy. And she can put her energy in and she can go to the classes she goes to at school and she can learn but then all her energy is gone. And if she digs deeper, she doesn't come back up. That's one of the hardest things we've learned. So we've learned to manage. She's learned to figure out how many spoons of energy she has. And then she just says, no, I can't do anymore. And I have to learn to listen. And I have to not push. And I have to not let her push herself. So we're managing. And we're lucky. But it's really important that we've had support to get us to this place. Because, as the shirt says, there are millions missing with this disease. Many people who have this disease in our community are not here tonight because they can't be here tonight. And other people, it's changed their whole life, their plans, everything, whatever they had hoped to do. Because they have to learn to manage and hopefully we can be there to support them. So thank you guys for coming tonight, those of you who experience chronic fatigue or myalgic encephalomyelitis, or fibromyalgia or any of the other related diseases. Thank you for taking your energy to be here tonight. We appreciate you sharing your spoonfuls with us.